The recent Israel-Gaza war has highlighted the division among African countries on supporting Palestine. Why Algeria declared uh, full solidarity with Palestine earlier on the, in the war, Kenya, Zambia, Ghana, and the Democratic Republic of Congo are among other African nations that have aligned with uh, Israel's position. The African Union Commission under Mustafa Mohamed expressed concern over the violence, blamed the denial of the fundamental rights of the Palestinians, and called on a two-state solution. The dual nature of African strengthening ties with Israel, while also supporting Palestine, is not an unexpected. Why many countries try to keep politics separated from trade relations, one will inevitably bleem, uh, bleed into the other. Experts say that uh, neither their seeming contradiction nor the division within Africa on the issue of surprise or suppressing and points to the recent split between African countries normally born by the mutual suffering of historical colonialism and racism as a reason for the division. The short answer is that Africa's division highlights each government's attempt to compartmentalize their interests and underlines some countries' strengthening ties with Israel. On the one hand, they are deep-rooted ties with uh, the Palestinian movement. On the other hand, the offer of cutting-edge technology, military assistance and aid from Israel. South Africa is facing increasing internal pressure from its civil society to take a clearer position in favor of Palestine. Much of Africa views uh, the current war as a continuation of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict rather than a singular battle. The African Union has been divided over granting Israel observer status to the continue that the continental body for over a decade. African leaders were divided after the war broke out between Israel and Palestine, with some expressing sympathy for Palestinians facing Israeli occupation and criticism of Hamas terrorism for its uh, surprise rocket attack. Stay with us as we get into the context of the situation, the war between Israel and Gaza. It's on your Pan-African television, Afric Media. Stay with us. <laughs> Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. Hello, thanks for joining us on your Pan-African Television. This is Afrique Media. It's an honor to always be with you to highlight some of the issues affecting the continent, if not directly, but indirectly. And today we're looking at why Africa is divided on supporting uh, Palestine. We're looking at the Israel-Gaza war, of course, which is making headline news on several media organs. We be discussing looking at the historical context and the geopolitical implication as well as uh, some of uh, the outcomes and the role played by the African Union as well as the United States in the ongoing crisis between uh, Israel and Gaza. We have the honor to uh, talk with our guest this day who will be joining us uh, via Zoom and we are inviting you equally to stay with us on the program as we shall be uh, giving out time for you to equally send in your reactions. If you're watching us, note that you can always uh, send in your reactions. We shall be getting your calls uh, during the program. Uh, for those of you following us on Facebook, leave us your comments. We shall have them right here during the program. And uh, to join us this day, we have Dr. David Matsanga. He's a political scientist and international relations expert. Uh, doctor, it's a pleasure having you on today's program, the uh, views on the continent on Afric media. Thanks for joining us, doctor. Thank you very much, and thank you all listeners and those watching us across the, the globe on this show, on this television. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor. Uh, we shall equally be joined by Elijah Nwoku, who is a researcher with Leeds University. He will be joining us uh, shortly during the program. And uh, let's begin right away with you, Doctor. We're looking at the uh, brief historical context of uh, what we have presently ongoing. Israel Gaza war, which is making headline news. What do you make of what what presentation do you have as regards a historical context? First of all, thank you very much for inviting me on this serious 
international crisis that has engulfed the, the entire Middle East mm -hmm. and the entire world. Yeah. The attack on 7th of October by Hamas after a relative peace that has been there in the, in the, in, in the Middle East has opened what we could call a, a very, very dangerous Pandora box that is not going to end today or tomorrow unless the world comes together unless the world comes down the security council the united nations security council comes down puts its feet down this could escalate into a huge 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 war that could engulf very many countries first in the middle east and now in africa and the rest of the co continents so that was must be condemned because they have had difficulties israel the Israelis and the Palestinians had these difficulties since 1948. But they come, they keep quiet, they go up, peace processes are done until we found a solution of a two state solution where they can exist uh, on, 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 on equal terms and recognize each other. But the attack by Hamas. Hamas is a terrorist group. We must be very honest. Hamas does not represent a nation. Hamas represents a fraction of the people of Palestine who decided not to go along with the peace process. And therefore, as a terrorist group, it will be treated as a terrorist group. However much you shout up to heaven, wherever you want to go, Ask Angel Gabriel or ask Prophet Muhammad. Hamas remains a terrorist group, a faction of the Palestinians that does not like peace or to sit down on table for negotiations. As things are happening, there is another side of the Arab country which are silent, especially Ramara in the West Bank, where uh, 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 Mohamed Abbas is the president of the Fatah group of the PLO, which is the Palestinian Authority. And I want to make it very, very clear. African Union does not recognize Hamas. African Union recognizes Palestinian Authority. Let the people know and let anybody Challenge me on this. AU does not recognize Hamas. Hamas is a terrorist group. It cannot be recognized by the African Union heads of state. We can recognize, and we have recognized, given the Af Palestinian Authority, recognized internationally, an observer status in African Union. So when you have a Secretary General of the African Union, a man, a clerk officer, a clerk of the African heads of state called Dr. Muhammad Faki, writing on our behalf, when the war is not between the Palestinian Authority and Israel, it is between Israel and Hamas. Let's get these two points very clear. And that is my line of thinking. My line of reasoning and of thinking is very clear that Hamas is a terrorist group designated as a terrorist group that did not want to sit on table in Oslo Accord and Camp David Accord and other accords. Remember, Hamas has killed people the Arabs themselves, the Palestinians themselves, they broke away and they killed over 500 soldiers of Fatah faction of Yasser Arafat and Muhammad Abbas. So it is not a group that we are dealing with <coughs> that we should go on not realizing. Above all, it is the provocator. It is the one that provoked 
It provoked, it went, it blew the fence to go and kill people. It maimed people in cold blood. So any organization, anybody in the world should first condemn an attack that was done by Hamas. Then we can come to the current attacks. Attacks on both sides that, that follow international law are bad attacks. And I don't recognize, I don't support any violence, whether it is coming from Israel or Hamas or whichever angle it is, or Hezbollah. I support peace, a peaceful coexistence of the people of Palestine and respect for the two nation states of Palestine of Palestine and Israel. That is where we are. Thank you. Mm. All right. Uh, thank you, Doctor. You, you've equally uh, been tweeting regarding this uh, situation, and you are calling on the neutrality of uh, the African Union. Uh, can we know what position the African Union, of course, is playing, uh, the role African Union is playing, and how it is impacting the situation? Are you calling for the neutrality of the African Union? I am calling for the neutrality of African Union Commission, not African Union. Okay. There is a difference here. Yeah, okay. African Union Commission Chairperson, Dr. Musa Faki Mohammed, or Dr. Mohammed Faki Musa of Chad, mm. has taken this organization for granted, thinking that this is his mother's organization thinking that this is a father's organization. He takes decisions without consulting leaders. He is not supposed to tell, to, to, to write a statement saying the, 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 the rights of the Palestinian rights. That was a very bad statement. Mm. Even the UN has not written that way. So who are you to write a statement condemning one side, but you have not condemned the Hamas? He did not condemn Hamas, the attacks of, <coughs> of Hamas on Israelis. We want a union, positive neutrality, to say we condemn all acts of terrorism, whether coming from Israel or the Palestinians of Hamas, that is terrorism. Whatever we talk about, if it is not following international law, it is terrorism against anybody in the world. But you can't come and condemn and be on one side, <coughs> issue a statement. I wish you read the statement of, of, the, of, of the chairperson of African Union, Dr. Musa Faki Muhammad, or Dr. Muhammad Faki Musa, whatever name you change. His statements are shallow. His statements are brutish. His statements are sardonic. They don't deserve any international status. He's putting African Union at crossroads. There are countries in African Union that went, whom, which you have read, they support Israel straight. So how are these countries going to unite when they come to the table with the African Union heads of state? Some countries have taken a neutral ground, which is okay. But there are countries that have said we are supporting Israel. And some countries now, but the chairperson of the African Union should remain neutral as the Secretary General of the African Union. He cannot bring personal feelings, personal, religious, political, and other, and, and, you know, affiliates of his wrong feelings and the right statements as if all of us feel the same. No, we pay for this African Union. Our taxation is done. All countries pay for this African Union to exist. This man has contravened quite a lot. He has contravened all African Union under article of rule of of, 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 of of, of procedure, Article 41 of Rules of Procedure of African Union have caught up with Dr. Muhammad Faki. 
because he has violated all of them, all of them. I, I, will, I will tell you and remunerate quite a number of things that have been happening in African Union that you will be shocked as a person who has been paying tax, who pays taxes for African Union to survive, for African Union to be having paying their bills, you pay for them, all of you in Africa, all of us in the diaspora, we send money home. And we are paying for the African Union to do our job. But the Secretary General has become an African president who takes the decisions without consulting us. Look at the decision. For example, taking African Union to G20. How many countries agreed to go to G20? Where is the office of G20? All of us live in the metros. My brother there, Elijah, lives in Canada. If he can tell you that in Canada there is an office, a street called G20 office headquarters, how can you carry G20 in a briefcase and come and lie Africans that we have joined G20? As who? What have you gone there to do? What have you taken there? Who gave you permission? Look at all. I want to shock you and I want to shock fellow Africans that all protocols, Malabo, Abuja, Maputo, Kampala, you can name them, list them here. If I tell you the shock I got, I went to the African Court of Justice. I was trying to file a case somewhere. I was, I, the, the judges called me in Arusha, Tanzania. And I'm telling my friend Elijah to, 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 uh, to, to listen to this one. This one is very interesting for him. The judges sat down with me and told me, eh, David, thank you for coming. David, we want to tell you frankly, that out of 30 countries, out of 30 countries, that by mouth, that said we shall join the African Court of Peoples and Human Rights, only eight, eight countries, Elijah, eight countries, only eight countries, eight countries have accepted, and I can name one of them in West Africa is Burkina Faso. It is signed an agreement. Malawi, Botswana, and another few smaller countries. Most of all these big superpowers, Nigeria, Ghana, all of them, there is nothing. Nobody has signed declaration under Article 34 of the AU protocol. Now, we have seven judges in Arusha, sitting, eating food, relaxing, dancing, gasoline, gasoline, petrol, rent, plus women, of course, and the men, yeah? going to nightclubs, eating our food. Is this the African Union that we want? They told me that we are here earning salary. It is not zero salary, Elijah. This is a salary of $4,000 to $5,000 to $10,000 per month. This is the salary that each judge is taking home plus allowances per month for now how many years? How many years? Another one, in, in the country trade, how many countries have signed? How many? Another one, the passport. They collected our money for passports. They collected our photographs. Elijah might not have taken a photograph. I took my photograph. Maybe they took it to the French authorities to fix me in something. That money was taken. The court money was taken. The judges told me, frankly, Matanga, go out and shout. Shout for us, maybe. We sit here from first to 31st. No 
ya no cases the african union chairman jefferson has not put pressure not lobbied the political and the security office the judicial office political team to land the mic so that elijah can come in let me shock you they went and recruited a man who has no degree in law from Burundi, a legal, uh, the head of the legal department of African Union has no degree, no law degree. Elijah, tell me, where are we heading? Is the, you have so many degrees, some of them you have kept them, you look, you lack even a box where to keep them. They should have recruited you to be the legal advisor, to advise them on, on all this. So, if this organization that comes out to single-handedly with his emotions, the chairperson Muhammad Faki uses emotions, his personal views, religious views, and says he condemns. He didn't condemn Hamas. He didn't condemn Hamas. He should have condemned Hamas and asked all the sides to rest it. He didn't do that. So, ladies and gentlemen, is this the African Union that we want? Some countries are not, are not interested. They don't want, there are people who don't want to go for conferences where Muhammad is accusing follow. My own country, the president is fed up completely with, with Muhammad Faki. Corruption. If I tell you the type of corruption, abuse, sexual abuse. In, in inside the offices to get a job in at the suburb. Elijah, you need, if your daughter is going there, you better escort her. Because there are, there are hyenas and a fee who want to feast on, on her before they give her the job. Yeah, okay. I have done all this research, branded it over to the AIU chairman in charge. I gave him the results. And then Mr. Muhammad Ifaq agreed there was corruption and sexual abuse in the offices. He sacked the other aide de camp of his, who was a French, French connection. That is the African Union you are telling me is not, it is divided. There is no unity here. Okay. Uh, uh, There's no unity. Okay.